Right, this is a lecture on number theory, and it's on continued fractions. And I think it's quite interesting, really, uh, but it's not too difficult. Right, first, as always, definitions. This is a continued fraction. It's when you have a value plus 1 over a value plus 1 over a value, and so on, uh, and it can, can be infinite for irrational numbers. If it does stop, then it means it's a rational number, you know, so 3 over 10 or whatever. And what we've got here, we denote, we denote this in this form. So we have a naught, which is our very first part. We have semicolon a1, comma a2, and these are the partial quotients, because they're parts of a, a fraction. Um, and the method we use to find the continued fraction is here. So we have like x1 is 1 over x0 minus the integer part of x0. That's what the brackets are meaning, the integer part. And if you wonder what x0 are, these are the a noughts that we had before. So a0 is just the integer part of x0, which is just your number to start off with. x2, just the same as this, we just get the formula here, x k plus 1 is 1 over xk minus the integer part of xk, with all the ak's equaling the integer part of the xk. And once you've found all these, we've got, some, we've got an example coming up, uh, we can use a method to approximate our values. So if it's an irrational number, then it's quite useful to find an approximate, approximation. So we use these initial things here, with P0 is A0, P1 is A1 times A0 plus 1, P, uh, Q0 is 1, Q1 is A1, and Pn is An times Pn minus 1 plus Pn minus 2, that's why I needed to give you these two, and the Qn is just the same really but with Qs. And if we put them in the form Pn over Qn, this will give you an approximation. Uh, and this, this does give a quite a close approximation. As the n gets bigger, it will give you an error of less than 1 over Qn squared. Right now, we've got an example. We want to find, I'll just ignore that, that should have been gone. Uh, find the continued fraction for the square root of 11. Now, if you did square root of 11 on your calculator, or you can just guess to start off with, uh, you know 9 is 3 and uh, 16 is 4, so it's going to be, be, be between 3 and 4, but we get 3.3166 as our value for square root of 11. Now we want the integer part of this, which is 3, and then we want to do the 1 over this minus this, so you're just doing one over the decimal part of each the, num the number each time. And this gives us the value for x1, which is 3.1583. So that's our x1. And of course, x1 is equal, a1 is equal to the integer part of the x1. So our a1 is 3. Up here, a0 is going to be 3. And now we want the, uh, the integer part of... So of course, uh, the integer part here is equal to this, which is 3 x2, this is 1 over 0.1583, is 6.3166. So we've got the integer part of that is 6, which means a2 is equal to 6. Um, and then we do the same again, we do 1 over 0.3166, which gives us 3.1583. Now this is exactly the same as up here, so we know this is just going to keep repeating. It's not stopping, because if it did, then we'd just get a proper integer here. But it's going to keep repeating. So we can denote this by putting a line over the top. So you don't actually need these two either. Uh, but we can put 3, there's a semicolon, and we've got 3, 6, and that's going to keep repeating. So we put a line on top of it. But like I say, you can just put a line on top there, just showing how to repeat. Now what we can do with this, we can find an approximation for the value of the square root of 11. So if we use 
those uh, formula here which I gave before and now what I've done I've put it into a table so I've got the N's down the side just done up to number four and the P's so the first P we've got uh, N is zero so we want P zero which it's telling us is A zero which is three P Q zero is one so now we have three over one the approximation is three to start off with which is three point three something or other so it's not that bad a first guess but then we do it again so now we've got three times a1 which is three plus um, one which gives us ten so three times three plus one gives us ten this one here do exactly the same we've got three times this one which is uh, three Oh, sorry, it's just it's just that one three, and then we can do ten divided by three, which is ten over three. What's that? That's a three and a third, which we're getting closer to it because it's three point three something. And as we keep going, so this one here, we've done a three. The next one is a six, so this is when it gets a bit easier. You have six times this, which is sixty, plus this, which is sixty-three. Six times this, which is eighteen, plus one is nineteen. 63 over 19, and it's getting really, really close. Like I said, the error is 1 over this squared. And then we do it again, so now we've got a 3 next. So we multiply this by 3, which gives us 189. Then we add the 10, 199. This times 3, 57, plus 3 is 60. That's why it's useful to do it in a table. 199 over 60. And, these, and this one as well, this is really close. Um, when you're doing it with pi, you actually get, well first you get 3, and then I think the next one you get is 7 over 22, no 22 over 7, which is the approximation that's given when you're back in primary school, which is quite a, well, high school, which is this where this comes into, into use. I thought that was quite interesting.